you are performing this repair at your own risk. We cannot be held responsible for any injuries or damage done to your device while attempting a repair. So far, there have been two generations of the iPod Classic, the 6th and 7th, and these have come in hard drive sizes of 80, 120, and 160 gigabytes. We'll be demonstrating this repair on two 160 gigabyte iPod Classics. The reason being is that the 6th generation 160 GB iPod Classic is a thicker iPod and therefore uses a different hard drive and battery, while the 7th generation iPod Classics are all thin versions. So if you have an 80 gigabyte or a 120 gigabyte iPod, Regardless of it being a 6th or 7th gen, you want to follow the directions for the thin version of the 160GB iPod Classic demonstrated here. If you have the 160GB iPod Classic, you want to confirm which generation it is so you can purchase the correct parts. Pictured here we have two 160GB iPod Classics. The one on the right is the 6th generation, while the one on the left is the 7th. The 6th generation uses a dual platter drive, while the 7th generation uses a single platter. Therefore, the 6th generation is thicker than the 7th. Today we'll be demonstrating how to replace the hard drive on both of these models. Now you'll notice that we already have them opened up. It's quite difficult to open the iPod Classic case. Therefore, we have a separate video specifically demonstrating how this is done. You'll find that it's a lot easier to open up the thicker 6th generation than it is the 7th. The hard drives used by the thin and thick versions of the 160GB iPod Classic differ. You'll notice the two connection ports are different sizes and require different hard drive cables. For the majority of iPod Classics, including the 80, 120, and 160 thin version, you'll want to follow the tutorial shown for the iPod on the left. Only if you have the thick version of the 160GB iPod Classic will you follow the tutorial shown on the right. Our first step will be to unplug the battery cable. To remove it from its port, we will lift up on the small brown clip shown here using our small flathead screwdriver. Now we'll lift up just enough so that the clip still sits in place but releases the tension holding that cable into the port. We'll do exactly the same for the thick version as demonstrated here. With the battery cables undone, we can now open the back casings to the left. However, be careful because as you can see, there is still a cable attached to the logic board which leads to the headphone jack and hold switch assembly. Here you can also see the two batteries located in the back metal housing. Anytime you have your iPod open for repair, it's not a bad idea to replace the battery. They are cheap and each one only has a finite number of charges per lifetime. Especially with a model like the iPod Classic where it's very difficult to open, replacing the battery is a good idea. Our next step will be to remove the rubber bumpers near the bottom of the iPod. These are typically blue in the iPod Classic. They are held in with some adhesive, so you may have to apply a bit of force to remove them. We'll now flip the hard drives back so that we have access to the hard drive cable connecting the drive to the logic board. We'll first demonstrate how to remove the hard drive cable for the thin version of the iPod Classic. We'll use our small flathead screwdriver, get underneath of the black tab, and give it a twist. This will release a tension holding the cable into the hard drive's port. And we can remove it as shown here. You'll notice the hard drive connector on the thick version of the 160GB iPod Classic is a bit different. We're actually going to come from the other direction and lift the black tab up, allowing us to remove the cable. And to accomplish this, we can carefully use our finger as demonstrated in the video. Here's a close up look at the two different types of cables. Here's a cable using the thick version of the 160GB iPod Classic. And here's a cable used in the thin version of the 160GB Classic in addition to the 80 and 120s. Now all that's left to do is install our replacement drives, plug our battery cables back in, and then we can close up the iPods. We'll then flip our hard drive back over, and we can use our small flathead screwdriver to tuck the rubber bumpers in place. 
We'll now insert our drive for the thin version in a similar manner. We'll then reinsert our blue rubber bumpers on the bottom of the iPods. And we're now ready to flip the back covers over and plug the batteries back in before closing the iPods. And we'll do this by inserting the battery cable into its port and then pressing down on the brown clip with our small flathead screwdriver to lock it in place. And the process is identical for the thick version. The final step will be to close up our iPod. And to do this, we'll lay it on a flat surface and apply downward pressure on all sides of the back casing. If your replacement hard drive has not already been formatted, you'll get the following screen when you go to power on your iPod. All you'll need to do is connect it to iTunes, click the restore button, and it will automatically install the iPod software on your iPod. You can find all the parts and tools necessary to complete this repair on our website. Thanks for watching.